Hello and welcome to SDN Tech Forum. As you can see, we are going to discuss the code 802.1x or port security and especially eTLS. Why we are doing that? Because most of the enterprise fabric network, if you consider from any vendor, whether it's Cisco, Juniper, Extreme, the automated rollout of fabric relies heavily on connecting users securely from anywhere, whether you are on campus, premise, and it gives you a consistent experience. The entire fabric is made up of many different technologies, but one of the technology which is very common or very frequently used is 802.1x or port security. This is not the first time we are touching on this topic if you see on my channel i have done a very detailed video talking about port based network authentication or 802.1x complete behavior where it works how it works uh, what are the use cases etc so what is that we are going to do something different in this video what we are going to do different is we are going to go through the wireless wireshark capture of this complete process and double click or try to dig deep into the packet behavior all right before we start that let me show you here you can see this is the eap capture and i'm going to walk you through the eap capture complete process however i think when we click on wireshark in real time it is hard to focus on the fields what we want to discuss so hence i will walk you through these fields within a documentation or a document itself all right so that is uh, our agenda for the for this video as you can see this is our test bed so we have a supplicant that mean in 802.1x terminology you have supplicant that is your end host then you have authenticator, which can be a switch, an AP, depend how you are connecting. It, it is applicable for both wired and wireless connection. And behind that, you may have a uh, NAC server or radius server, which can facilitate the authentication. So authenticator itself may not be responsible for authenticating. It is just the facilitating between supplicant and the radius. All right. But our focus will be left hand side of uh, this process. It start with EPOL, e uh, Extensible Authentication Packet over LAN start. As you can see, my supplicant or my laptop or workstation, when it wake up or it connect to a port which is uh, 802.1x enabled, it start with EPOL start. Authenticator in turn request identity supplicant will go ahead and response with its identity authenticator in turn relay this identity information identity information to radius server based on what or how you are authenticating radius may ask for more detail so you may see a challenge a complete radius process going on and that is all facilitated using eap request and response message once radius is satisfied and it give you radius access except that point of time authenticator is going to send you eap success and that's where the complete uh, complete this port is completely open and you can do whatever your role allow you to do once this user want to sign off or he disconnect he or she disconnect then it will send a eap log off and the port will fall back to the initial state where which is access blocked all right so this picture let me show you in this uh, so this document is from old video i'm going to post the document link once again so that if you are interested in document you can go ahead download and read through it this is how it start so your supplicant it start with uncontrolled channel and it's as you can see for eight 
802.1x switch port. Switch create two virtual access point. For each port, the control port is open only when device connected to port is authorized by 802.1x. Before authentication, you rely on same port but two virtual channels, uncontrolled port, which provide a path for EPL traffic and it, it allow DSCP, CDP, etc. All right. E packet type, as you can see, start identity request, start response, and lock off. And this is the packet structure looks like. So E is layer two. It works at layer two. I will show you the packet again. As you can see, we have layer one, which is the data payload, then Ethernet, which is layer two. And within Ethernet, we have this A22.1x packet encapsulated. That means it works at layer two. How you can identify whether it's an E packet. So the type field is set to hexadecimal 888E. That means it is a E packet. And then you may have data. Data further break down into uh, different fields. As you can see, we have the protocol version, protocol type byte, and what can what can be the packet type? Packet type can be E packet, EPL start, EPL log off, and EPL key. And you will see these things in Wireshark Capture. All right. Let me show you another picture, which is a double click on the packet itself. As you can see, we have the type 888E. Within data, if it is an EPL packet, you can see we have the protocol version field. It can be set to 1 or 2. The next Field, what you need to pay attention is packet type. So this is, as you know, this is already denoted as e, e packet, or this is a EEP uh, at layer two. Within this, what else you can see that is depend on packet type. You can have if it is set to zero, that means it is a E packet. E packet can be anything: identity request, response, um, your authentication, etc. Or it can be EPL start and EPL log off, other things. Within packet body, again, if you break it down, another layer, you will have a, you will have again have a code, and this code actually is used to denote what kind of EAP packet type it is. Is it a request? Is it a response? So you can see it's a nested hierarchy here. If you have this packet type set as zero. That means it's an e packet. Within e packet, what kind of e packet it is? Is it a request, response, success, or failure? That is denoted by this code. Then we have ID and, and then data. Within data, again, you may have, you, you can see a type field, and this type field is for authentication type. What kind of authentication you're using for your e process? Okay. So this is uh, the thing I would like to, uh, you to focus or maybe take a screenshot, keep it handy. And now, as you can see, we will start with our first packet. This Apple is supplicant. That means it is the end host device. And Cisco is AP. And we, as you know, it starts from end device. Uh, so we are sending a EPL start packet. As I connect to my wireless or the wired port, I'll start with EPL packet. And that is mentioned as EPL start. You can see a22.1x authentication version is one and type is start. EPL and the code is one here, as you can see. But Wireshark is kind enough to show us um, actual wording. So we don't have to go back and refer that diagram again and again. So we have this EPL start with type one. What is the next packet? Next packet, as you can see, it is initiated from the AP to the end host. That means authenticators to supplicant. And what is this? This is request type packet requesting identity. Now, as you can see, the version is set to two. Type is E packet. This is a E packet. Again, I'll go back here and you can see this is E packet here, packet type set to zero packet type 0 and then we have the EAP further parameters code code is this is a request 
type. Type is identity and identity. Who's requesting identity? Here you can have the requested requester information. So the device, upstream device, authenticator device where you are connecting, which port, what WLC, what SSID, all those information will be listed here because I am requesting identity and I'm uh, uh, authenticator is requesting identity so it is uh, announcing itself what is the second uh, or third packet here in response to the request we are sending response back so from authentic uh, from supplicant to authenticator again as you can see some fields are same like version is one type is e packet of course and then the code changes to response id pay attention to id id is one and type is identity i'm sending my identity here all right now i have another request coming and this is th this there can be multiple requests right uh, so now my switch is asking me to authenticate using eep peep all right so you can see this is a request and it is sent to the end device type is e packet code is request as you have seen earlier type is protected eep type 25 that is protected eep eps uh, eep tls flag flag is set to something and then start true version is one okay what happened to this identity uh, this request right this request what happened here my end device or supplicant is sending a response saying legacy NAC that means sorry I do not support EEP peep and that's why it is sending a response with type legacy NAC it is also sending its desired auth or supported auth type which is TLS EEP or EEP TLS uh, coded as type code 13 so so my end end device is telling me that okay i cannot authenticate using the method you proposed that's why i'm sending you a legacy nac or a negative acknowledgement but i also want to express what i support what kind of authentication i support and that's where it is setting the type or desired authentication to 13 then what happened Again, you can see it is authenticator to supplicant. Authenticator listen to this request and it says, okay, fine, send me EAP uh, TLS authentication. So it is requesting EAP TLS authentication. How? As you can see here in this packet, version is two. EAP type is again still EAP packet because we are playing with request and response. Code is request. ID got in increase from 126 to 128. So it's a sequential uh, increment. Type now is TLS E as requested or indicated by end host. All right. So what happened in response to that? Now my uh, supplicant is sending a response back to authenticator. Here, as you can see, response TLS E. Again, type is E packet. Code is response. ID is 128 as you can see id is matching for request and response 128 128 type is eep tls type 13 and then finally what happened here you can see the authenticator is set happy with the authentication method and other things so it has got a received uh, access request from the radius upstream radius once it received that it is happy and it is sending me a eep success message so as you can see type is still eep packet but the code is success and it has no data so it's empty that means you are allowed to connect what also happens as a part of eep tls so you know tls have this um, um client server exchange and key negotiations etc so along with this eep tls kicks in and as you can see between authenticator and uh, supplicant 
the TLS exchange happen in terms of client hello, server hello, they exchange the client cipher information and etc. so that secure communication can be provided. We do have a TLS video as well on our channel. So if you are interested in under knowing about TLS, you can go search TLS and you can find a couple of videos. All right. So this is all about uh, A22.1x EAP TLS, how EAP, exchange, uh, EAP packets get exchanged, what is coded within the packet or frame. I would say frame, right? Because we are talking there too. So what is coded within frame and how this uh, complete negotiation happens. So I hope uh, you are feeling confident about uh, this protocol now. Go watch the first part because there I talk very much in detail about the protocol use cases and all this video was specific to the packet walk and i hope you enjoyed this so if you enjoy this video please go ahead like subscribe share